Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do our May 25th Just Right a Day in a Meditation. I hope you're doing well this morning. I am taping from uh, downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm here in town for a family reunion. Okay, the title of the meditation, May 25th, Good and Bad Feelings. This should be good. A lot happens in one day, both negative and positive. If we do not take time to appreciate both, perhaps we will miss something that will help us grow. Now that comes from our IP number eight, just for today. Most of us seem to unconsciously judge what happens in our lives each day as good or bad, success or failure. We tend to feel happy about the good and angry, frustrated, or guilty about the bad. Good and bad feelings, though, often have little to do with what's truly good or bad for us. We may learn more from our failures than our successes, especially if failure has come from taking a risk. Attaching value judgments to our emotional reactions tie us to our old ways of thinking. We can change the way we think about the incidents of everyday life, viewing them as opportunities for growth, not as good or bad. We can search for lessons rather than assigning value. Hmm. When we do this, we learn something from each day. Our daily 10 step is an excellent tool for evaluating the day's events and learning from both success and failure. Just for today, I am offered an opportunity to apply the principles of recovery so that I will learn and grow. When I learn from life's lessons, rather when I learn from life's events, I succeed. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please, and thank you. We're talking about changing the way we look at something here. Um, I know for me, even if I don't verbalize it, every situation I encounter, every interaction, and even my responses and thoughts to those situations, I always put them in the frame, good frame, bad frame, good day, bad day, good person, bad person, good this, bad that. I think it's innate. I think it's something that I do quite naturally. That's why we talk a lot about automatic negative thoughts, ants, A-N-T-S. It's automatic. In order to change that, I honestly feel that for me to change that is, it's, it's not like staying clean when I first got here. When I was staying clean when I first got here, right? And that was, I still am 30 plus, you know, 30 plus years later. But when I got clean, and I was struggling with the desire. Many of you know my first 24 hours being clean, I received a promotion, okay? That I really didn't deserve, but the person had been praying and I happened to be the first one that showed up, okay? For me, even in that moment, I still wanted to use. 
There were many days that I struggled to stay clean. There were many days I told myself, this weekend, I'm done with this N.A. stuff. I'm going out, I'm going to party, I'm going to buy so many drinks for so many people, I'm going to leave the largest tip, tip rather, right? I had this ideal that I would eventually go back. But even in that, right after that thought would be, girl, you got it five days now. Why would you do that? Why would you pick up? After all this time, you've been wanting to get clean. Why would you pick up? Okay, now, that's a stupid thought. We're not using. Go make a meeting. Call somebody, right? And so even five months later, I was thinking the same thing. The desire would come up periodically, and I have to beat it back with my common sense of, hey, you're doing something you have never done in life. Even if there's bad days, even if all your behavior hasn't changed, my stream, you're clean. I would have to tell myself that. So now I'm moving forward 30 years plus later and I'm telling myself, you know what? That's, that, that is a bad habit of yours, girl. That is... That is the reaction or response, right? Analyzing my day as good or bad, people as good or bad, situations as good or bad. All of that measuring stick, right? Measuring every situation, every thought, even myself is a bad habit. It is a falling short, right? From the seventh step that operates out of the character defect that I'm entirely ready to have removed from me, which is fear. Fear, resentment, right? These character defects cause me to put on these glasses that have good or bad shade to them. Am I making sense? So now everything I look at, even if the situation is pure, every situation I look at, I'm looking at it with this thought. Is this good? Is this bad? Can you trust this? Should you not? Okay, now what? What are you going to do, girl? Okay, so I know if I go through that, everybody else, because I believe it's innate. I believe that that is our humanity, right? That's being human, our experience of being human. So in order for me to stop that, here's the point. In order for me to change that, I have to intentionally make the decision moment by moment, just like when I first got clean, I have to do this moment by moment, situation by situation. Listen, guys, let me tell you something. I can have a good day. I can have a good day and I can be in, say, maybe the grocery store, a restaurant, uh, minding my business in traffic. And I tell you almost instantly without even thinking, if somebody triggers me in any kind of way, game on. I know you did not just talk to me like that. Have I talked to you like that? No. So I need to check you. Game on. I have to do that. Even with 30 plus years, my natural instinct is still to try to protect myself and make sure people understand that I'm not a doormat anymore. Now, how I present it might change, but it's so much a part of me, this trauma thing, right? This trauma bond, right? It's so much a part of me that I have to check myself day by day, situation by situation, even, okay, simplest thing. Even in doing this meditation, I still find I need to check my spirit. I need to check my mind, my thoughts, the way I'm coming across. And I do it quite naturally. 
because it's a habit now to filter everything through the second thought, the more appropriate, more spiritual self. It's become second nature. I'm getting to the point where I can kind of trust myself after 30 plus years to actually respond in a spiritual manner in an appropriate way based out of the 12th step, step having had a spiritual awakening, right? Having had a spiritual awakening, I'm able to apply these principles in all, look at that word, all of what? My affairs situations, circumstances, endeavors, goals, ambitions, failures, successes, relationships, and all of my affairs. That's a tall order. That is a tall order. And in order to accomplish it, which is possible, I have to live in just for today. I have to live moment by moment. I have to take every situation and run it through that spiritual principle filter instead of that good or bad. So they're saying, instead of looking at it like that, why not look at at life and your situations as an opportunity for you to gain some growth as a result of looking at it through a lens? What can I do? grasp from this? What can I learn from this? And the power of the 10th step is present here because you're looking at your situation nine times out of 10 after the fact and saying, this was okay. I think that this right here led to this relationship blossoming. And But this right here, I see that I'm still quite worried about money and such and such and such and such. I'm trying to tell you, I think Narcotics Anonymous um, is a gift from God. And I also think it is something that really is usable by every human being alive, but not every human being alive wants what we have. We are privileged to have Narcotics Anonymous. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today. I said a lot. I said a lot, but I know that whatever I'm putting down, you're picking it up because you're hanging out with me. All right. So I appreciate, I appreciate, I don't, I don't comment daily on the subscriptions, right? But I appreciate every person listening and I appreciate it when you think about others and you share with them and help them have a feeling of wellness and well-being in the mornings where they can cover the meditation with me. Having said that, I'm going to have a beautiful day on purpose and I want for you to do the same. You know what? I'm in downtown Memphis, Tennessee, and there's a part of me that wants to go out and enjoy it, but I saw so many bars and it is so many hawkers trying to get money off of tourists and it triggered me. And it triggered me to the point to say that, you know what? I'm here for a family reunion. Let me be about the business of that. I'm not interested in the sightseeing and all of that because I don't have the energy. I don't have the energy for that lifestyle, that particular party in life. I don't have the energy for drunks hanging over me, laughing and talking. I'm, I'm not doing any of that. I'll pass because I can and I want to have a beautiful day on purpose. It's all about the decisions we make in the moment. Talk to you tomorrow.